One reason why Ecstatosoma tiarita makes such great pets is the fact that they are very easy to breed in captivity. But, once you have a couple of mature females that are flicking dozens of eggs a day, it doesn't take long until you become overwhelmed with how you are going to hatch your ever increasing collection of marijuana seeds, I mean, giant prickly stick insect eggs. Before we delve into how to successfully hatch your eggs, let's take a look at the anatomy of an egg. Eggs can range in colour from cloudy white to dark brown and will often change coloration throughout its incubation time. Healthy looking eggs consist of a capitulum, an operculum, a micropylar plate and a micropyle. The capitulum doesn't really serve a purpose for eggs that are in captivity. To understand why, let's have a look at how Ecstatosoma tiaritum hatch in the wild. Once a stick insect egg plummets to the forest floor, ants, in particular the red-headed black ant, get attracted to the capitulum for whatever reason. Some sources say that the ants are attracted to it because the capitulum contains a substance that tastes sweet to the ants. But my tongue doesn't pick up any sweetness at all. Yes, I've eaten a capitulum for science. Moving on. The ants get attracted to the capitulum and realise that this particular bit of the egg is a food source. So, they carry the whole egg back into their food chamber. Once the capitulum is eaten off, the ants realise there aren't any more tasty bits on the egg. So, they then take the stick insect egg into their rubbish chamber. Here, the egg will remain for up to three years until it hatches into a red-headed ant mimic. But in captivity, thankfully we don't have to rely on ant chambers to incubate the eggs. And thankfully, it doesn't take up to three years for captive eggs to hatch. Asexual eggs take between 6 to 12 months to hatch, whereas sexual eggs take between 4 to 6 months. Nonetheless, the capitulum does not serve a purpose in captivity and eventually falls off the egg after a couple of weeks. The operculum, on the other hand, plays a very important role in both wild and captive populations. It acts like a door in which the nymph will push open and crawl out from in a very fast and rather sinister looking way. The micropylar plate is an area of the dorsal surface which contains within its boundaries the micropyle. And the micropyle acts as an entry point used by the sperm to enter into the egg to begin fertilisation. Unhealthy eggs on the other hand may be abnormally small and wrinkled in texture. They may be missing parts or have extra parts like these eggs that one of my stick insects produced. They have two micropiles and appear to have no capitulum or operculum whatsoever. Usually abnormal eggs are produced by females that are getting to the end of their life and usually do not hatch. Some eggs may also look normal on the outside but don't actually have a forming embryo within. To determine whether your eggs are healthy and will eventually hatch, all you need to do is put your eggs in water. Healthy eggs will fall to the bottom, and unhealthy eggs with no developing embryo will remain floating on top. Now that we've learnt about the egg anatomy, let's move on to how to incubate our Ecstatosoma tiaritum eggs. There are two easy ways to incubate your eggs. The first being the most simplest method, and the second being the most successful method. For the first method, you'll need a ventilated plastic container, a moist paper towel on the bottom, and of course, your eggs. Mix the eggs with water every day and change the paper towel whenever it gets mouldy. I suggest moving the eggs around once every day to lower the chance of mould growing. Although this method is the easiest and cheapest, it's the least successful because mould outbreaks are very common and it's harder to keep a constant humid environment. For the second method, you'll also need a ventilated plastic container, 
a layer of moist cocoa peat on the bottom of the container and some springtails sprinkled on top along with your eggs. Springtails are fantastic little invertebrates that will eat any mould that may begin to grow in the moist environment. Although this method requires a bit more money to start, it is the most successful incubation method because there's less risk of a mould outbreak and the humidity is more controlled.